Hello, my name is Chris Douglas. I am a SharePoint developer, and today I'm going to talk to you about promises in Angular JS. We'll start with a simple example of what a promise might look like in the real world. Let's say you're sitting at home and you decide that you want to order a pizza, but you don't want to have to stop what you're doing and wait until the pizza arrives to continue with your activity. So you get on the phone and you call the pizza restaurant. When they answer the phone, you are establishing a promise with them that they are going to deliver you a pizza at some point. So you complete your order and they hang up the phone and return control back to you. Now at some point in the future, you're gonna get your pizza. But at this time, you're not on hold with them. You're not waiting on them while they prepare your pizza and send it to you. You're able to continue with the next thing you are going to do, and you're able to do that up until the pizza arrives. So you are freed from waiting on the transaction to be completed. You are able to keep doing what you are doing. And it's only after the pizza arrives that the promise, the promise of delivering you a pizza, has been completed. Let's look at an AngularJS example of calling a, an asynchronous function and returning a promise. Promises are only related to asynchronous functions. That is to say, a function that is called and then left alone until it returns a value. Typically, if you're going to be talking to another website or data source, you don't want your code to sit there and wait till you get a result, you want it to keep on going. So we've got this uh, data factory and it has a method called get categories. Get categories returns a promise. So when I first call get categories, as soon as I've called it, my code immediately drops down to here and then is going to run whatever code I have following this process. It's only after get categories returns a result that I'm going to call one of these two methods. There are only two possible outcomes from calling a promise. Then or catch for success or failure. So let's say that we succeed. We hit this line after the then, and we have a result data that we can then assign to a local variable VM categories. Data is a local variable. You need to assign it to another variable if you're going to use it somewhere else in your program. Let's say we failed, and we're going to come to this point immediately after the catch. The catch also returns a value, which we call response, which we're immediately going to pass to another function, VM show error, which is going to show user friendly and console error outputs to tell us what the error was. Now we're going to take a look at get categories, which is our function we're calling that returns a promise. There are two possible returns from this function here and here. Because this is a factory, we have the ability to store a categories collection and it can persist from one call to another. So the first time we come through and we call get categories, the collection data categories has not been established. So it's going to skip this first if statement. It's going to define data categories and it's going to call an HTTP method. That HTTP method, when it returns a promise, is going to return data categories, which has now been populated. So our second pass through 
data categories does exist, and we're going to return a value. So now that we know the flow on the first and second call to get categories, let's look at the actual promises that are returned. In this case, data categories already exists, and we're going to return data categories as a value to the calling program. You notice that we have this method here, q.win. So you might ask, why don't I just simply say return data categories if it exists? The problem is the calling program is using the then method. It is expecting a promise to be returned. If you are requiring a promise from a function, every possible return from that function has to be in the form of a promise. So how do we satisfy the promise when we're not actually making a call to HTTP or some other actual asynchronous call? We are able to use q.win. q.win is going to wrap whatever you put inside the parentheses in a promise and return that to the calling program. In this case, q.win is returning data categories. If you simply need to return a promise with a null value, you could say q.win and just empty parentheses. All right, so let's take a look at what happens the first time through. We're going to be calling HTTP, and it's going to return a value. So what is HTTP? That is a library from Angular that lets us make an asynchronous call to an external data source. In our example, we are calling a REST API, and we're returning the items in the categories list in SharePoint. But you can return any sort of data source. The thing to keep in mind here is when you call this HTTP method, it's immediately going to drop past it, just like in our calling program we saw a minute ago, and anything else that remains in the function is going to get called. At a point in time when HTTP successfully returns, if it's successful, we go here after the then call. We're going to take the response that is returned and we're going to process it in this case by building a collection. If the HTTP failed, we would call a catch. Since we haven't designed a catch and put it in this function, the catch is going to bubble up, and in the calling program, the error will be processed and shown to the user. I hope this video was helpful to you in understanding how promises work in AngularJS. Please see my playlist of AngularJS and SharePoint for a complete overview of how to use this scripting language in creating single page applications using SharePoint lists. And please click the subscribe button below and look forward to seeing you again soon.